Hello guys, this is Cannibal Chess, and I'm finally back with another video. And today in this video, we're going to be going over the Rui Lopez opening. And as many of you know, this opening starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop to b5. And at this point, it's black's decision as to which variation the game is going to go into. So if black plays this move, it would be the Morphe's defense. Um, and then from here, the light square bishop could retreat to a4, and then black might push b5 as well, and then the, the bishop would have to go back to b3. This could be an option that the game could go into. Or black could play something like the Steinitz defense. And from here, white could potentially push d4 to here to try and break open the center. They could also castle, or they could play c3. It would also be a strong move because it's making way for the d4 pawn to, to come up and have a little bit more defense on it when it tries to push for for an advantage here and another well-known variation is the berlin defense which is just knight to f6 after the Rui lopez opening starts um, and this is actually my favorite opening to play against the Rui lopez the berlin defense because it looks like you're just giving away this pawn for free after after bishop takes and then maybe you take back with the b pawn then it looks like white well, can just take this pawn here but they actually can't without without giving up some material of their own because after queen to e7, then you're attacking the knight, but you're also attacking this pawn that's undefended. So if if white tries to defend the knight because it doesn't want the knight to move, because if the knight moves, then like, you know, you're gonna be able to take the pawn and then check the king. They might play something like d4 to try and protect the knight, but you can just push pawn to d6 and then now they're kind of forced to go back you know you don't want your knight to get taken for a pawn so they can move back to d3 or to f3 and once they move back then you're just going to pick up the e4 pawn and now it's going to be equal material and i would say even though the computer's saying that it's kind of an even game this is obviously a better position for black but let's say that white doesn't go for that and just you know does like a normal move like castling then black also has a few good options. Again, they can play d6, trying to open up this diagonal, maybe two pin the, the knight on the queen in the future. Uh, they could also play something like knight to d4, attacking this bishop while also trying to, to get a trade here uh, in the center of the board. Or they could even take the, the pawn on e4, and I wouldn't really consider this as the best move, just because it is very easy to to mess up on on uh, your position. So this could be what it would end up looking like for black, and this just it isn't really a nice position to play as black because here you know white could just play d4, and they just they have a lot more pieces. Um, targeting the the black side, so I just wouldn't recommend uh, taking the the pawn on e4. Probably something like d6 would make the most sense. You know, stabilizing this center pawn, making sure that you know if white tries to to take this knight, then there's no way that they're going to get this pawn for free as well. That would make more sense to me anyway. But enough about the Berlin for now, let's go over what you can do for the Steinitz defense. So here, after the Rui Lopez begins, you can play d6. And this might look kind of dangerous because you're opening up a pin on the king. But the the only danger in this is if the pin is kept. So if, if uh, white decides to take the knight here, it's actually much better for black because now, not only is that, that attack gone, but they also have this nice open b-file that they can possibly try and get attacks going on as well later in the game. Or they even have ideas of, of rook lifting if that uh, seems to be a possibility later on in the game as well. So that wouldn't be a very good idea for white here. What white could do, some of the, the moves that are ideal for white here, they could castle obviously. They could play knight to c3 would be a good developing move. They could also play pawn to d3 or even pawn to c3. And in most of those situations, the best best moves for black are the same. So if white castles, best moves are knight to f6, just you know developing the knight to a good square, attacking this pawn, also putting a little bit of pressure on the d5 square. 
Um, bishop to d7 is also a good move. You know, putting a little bit of defense on this knight also. Uh, after you move bishop to d7, then you can now move the knight away because there's no longer a pin on the king. So that's also an option. You could go for this pin as well. Um, if you do this though, just know that they are probably going to push h3 and then you would probably be forced back to, to h5 here, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but that's also another option. You could also play bishop to e7 and that's just another way of developing the, the pieces on the king side so you can castle later on. These are all these are all uh, good options for, for black here in most positions. Even if you know white does this, then you could just play something like this. And if they try and go for something sneaky like this, you know, because they're like, well, now if they take my knight, then I can I can get this attack on on black's knight here, then you can just play a6 and then now the, the bishop's either forced to move back or take the knight. So there's really there's really no danger in moving any of these moves in most positions. And now we're going to briefly talk about the Morphe defense. So after a6, white has three main moves that they could play. They could play c4, trying to go after something like the fried liver attack, you know, maybe they play something like a knight to, to uh, g5 if if black plays something like f6 after, after white plays that. So they could go into this line if you let them. Um, or they might go back to a4, and then in which case you could push b5, and then you might have them uh, going to b3, and then the, it could also end up in the, the same uh, position, well, kind of same, and you could end up in the fried liver, or they could just simply take the knight. And if they take the knight here, there are a few things that you should know. Don't take with the b pawn, take with the d pawn, it's just better. Uh, the computer says it's better. It also looks kind of better because now you have this nice open file that the, the queen can, can get active on. It also uh, keeps this pawn in check, so if the pawn tries to come down to here, then you could probably just take, just to make sure that white doesn't have a bunch of pawns in the center of the board, and then you might even get like a queen trade here. Something like that could happen, and then you'd almost be in the, in the end game at that point. But one more thing I'm going to mention is in this in this variation they very well could um, just after you after you take they could just go for for this knight takes e5 move and at this point you just play queen to d4 and it's kind of the same idea in the Berlin uh, defense when you play that that queen to e7 move to to kick the the knight back so here you're going after the pawn and the knight and in this position, um, white doesn't really have any way of defending defending the knight. I mean, they could play something like this. That would just be a horrible move because it's just opening up the, the king side even more. So they can really only just go back. And then once they go back, then you can just simply pick up the pawn. And then black's just better here. But yeah, that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope my explanations made sense. As always, thanks for watching my videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.